ants on the ground, ants on the ground, looking like a fool with your ants on the ground. Ants. Although they live among us, we rarely give these tiny insects a second thought. And more times than not, we underestimate these amazing creatures. Relatives to the wasp, ants have evolved to be one of the more dominant land-dwelling creatures on the planet. All living things on Earth have certain obstacles they must overcome to survive and thrive. Ants are no exception. Whereas humans might consider food supply and gravity as restrictions, these obstacles pose little threat to ants. But just as ants can climb on walls and fall from any height remaining practically unfazed, they must battle many forces that rarely influence our daily lives as humans. One such force is due to surface tension. Surface tension is a property of the surface of liquids. Electrostatic forces cause adjacent fluid molecules to be attracted to each other. This property is what causes water droplets to form. Where water droplets may just seem an interesting phenomenon to us, they can pose a serious threat to a creature as small as an ant. Surface tension creates a barrier surrounding the droplet which is too strong for the ant to break out of. The ant is incarcerated in this aquatic prison indefinitely. A lone ant would be helpless in the presence of a large body of water, but ants have found interesting ways to overcome fluid effects. Joining together, ants create a raft where they can support each other. In order to find solid ground, they begin exploring their surroundings. Here, the ants are shown spreading out over a body of water in search of solid ground. Due to the constant motion of food coloring molecules in this dish of water, a similar process is observed. This is known as diffusion. When diffusion occurs, molecules in an area of relatively high concentration move to an area of relatively low concentration. In our experiment, the food coloring represents molecules of high concentration. When mixed with water, which has a lower concentration of food coloring, the molecules in the food coloring diffuse to fill the entire container. It is evident that the ants are behaving similarly to the food coloring in this experiment. Both have the tendency to diffuse to lower concentrations within the dish. Ironically, the ants must act as a fluid in order to escape it. Once an ant finds land, it will create a bridge leading the rest of the ant raft to safety. As these ants try to navigate the contoured surface, some of them move to fill in gaps in the terrain as others use these ants as a bridge for further exploration. The ants' ability to fill in gaps and move freely on top of each other allows them to mimic the way that a highly viscous fluid might handle this same situation. All fluids have a property known as viscosity. It's the measurable thickness or resistance to the flow in a fluid. Water has a low viscosity and flows easily. Honey, on the other hand, has a higher resistance to flow. The tendency of the fluid to follow the profile of the terrain and fill in these gaps is caused by something called the no-slip boundary condition. This condition states that the fluid molecules that are in direct contact with the surface have a relative velocity equal to zero. Here, the ants can be seen making their way out of a funnel. The ants are strong enough to resist forces due to gravity and remain inside the funnel. However, due to their constant motion and curiosity, they seem to flow out like a fluid would. When ants are observed in large numbers, they mimic fluids in many ways. This group of ants begins in the shape of a ball, which over time loses its shape as the ants grow tired of this formation and disperse. A similar effect can be seen in the non-Newtonian fluid composed of a mixture of cornstarch and water. A non-Newtonian fluid is defined as a fluid whose viscosity is not constant. Dripping honey and non-Newtonian fluids may not be the first thing that come to your mind when stepping in a bed of ants. But next time you turn on your garden hose to flush these so-called pests out of your flower garden, maybe you will do so with a little bit more reverence and knowledge about the undeniable relationship between fluids and these tiny, amazing creatures.